Hello guys, GM, GM, and welcome once again to our wrap-up AMA Spotlight featuring League of Kingdoms. So this is gonna be our last day of the game Spotlight where we'll, uh, we will be sharing our experiences and fun moments during the entire week. So we still have here our community leads on the stream tonight. We have No ACLs, one of our community um, streamer, and Fallen Corpses uh, from the community, community operations to give us like the one on uh, ones of the game and we have also a special guest uh our lead game ambassador for lok map so can uh please guys introduce yourselves let's go let's go yeah, i don't think any introductions are needed for for me or no acls here but nat maybe if you want to let everybody know uh you know a little bit about yourself since i think this is your first time we've actually had you on a, on a spotlight uh, yeah, I think this is actually the first time I've been on a spotlight. I mean, I've, I've not had much with uh, a lot of the other games, but uh, I came here for Loke in, uh, I think, November 21, and just kind of stuck around since, and eventually just took over. And just been, nice. you know, both leading us in-game, and then took over help with the DAO, and, and now with the server and everything, and just kind of... Just keep going up and up. Uh, he's he's undershooting okay. how much value he actually provides for us on the LOK side here. Uh, Nap Nap is like not only one of our top players within uh, our YGG alliances, but he's the one who's dealing with most of the Drago uh, delegation uh, breeding as well as the land dev stuff. Uh, he set that up. So if you're getting any, any sort of income, whether it's from Drago's or from land dev itself, it's all because Nap has, uh, been able to set that up and he continues to, to work with that. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. So definitely Nap is a really, um, vital part of our LOK community. So I actually um, was streaming with me before um, with uh, on the LOK uh, community stream, but it's actually my first time to be uh, on stream with Nap. So um, Nap, maybe you can uh, share some experience on how you started with LOK. Just, uh, I was just curious on how you found out the game, uh, what made you um, be what you are right now uh, for the entire YGG community. Well, yeah, it kind of just, uh, well, as far as the responsibility, just kind of happened by accident. I just slowly took on more and more as time went by. But, you know, it was just aggressive growth early on uh, playing the game. And it was kind of slow till the first of the new CBC. Like, I entered it with T4, and we learned a lot of very hard lessons during that CBC. Um, but we took those lessons to heart, and we've grown since. And we've actually uh, taken gates and led offense in CPC now. And that was just the, the big driving forces to try to win. Um, nice. Of course. Yeah, Nat, I know you've been here game. like doing your thing for a while. So it's nice to see like how far you've come. Like honestly, like just the, the guild in general, like LOK is strong here in YGG. So doing big things. Yeah, it was never, never just about me. We've been trying to grow everyone to become a formidable force. Um, and we've actually come quite a ways with that. I mean, we've got quite a few really high power players now. Sky's not on the list. Oh, right. He's in the, never mind. I was going to show Sky too. <laughs> uh, he's in the, he's in YGGS, which we actually took over our neighboring alliance. Uh, which used to be Split World. Nice. Just absorbing the other guilds <laughs> in the realm. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, one by know, one. Just... As well. Everyone's growing stronger in the process, right? So yep, it's good to is. see. Yeah, they were having some some leadership was stepping down and they didn't have anyone confident enough. So we had a good relationship with them and they're like hey can we still have people that want to play and we don't want to leave them without any any leadership is ygg willing to kind of take the torch up there and we uh worked on a plan and figured that out amazing continuing to carry the torch it's good to see 
Uh, when I was with uh, May and Bogo okay. uh, way back, uh, I think um, YGG had like um, three clans, uh, YGG 0, 1, and 2. So um, right now, uh, what's the status of the guild? Like how big uh, are we talking about um, in terms of expansion? And I think that was about last year. So um, I heard that you guys have been um, like um, merging with um, um, dead guilds or um, people who doesn't know where to go afterwards after their old guild has um, disbanded or what. So, uh, like, can you share us like the growth of YGG as a guild, like uh, as a community as well in uh, in LOK? Yeah. So so far, we still have YGG zero, which is uh, the one I'm looking at right now, which is the main alliance. We still have YGG one, which is where we put a lot of our starters, and both are pretty much full right now. We also, like uh, we were talking, we took over Split World, which was the uh, alliance that was next door. And they are, I think, at like 80 or 90 members. Uh, 93. So we still have nice. YGGF, which is uh, their little farm alliance, which is mostly inactives, but we still have it. And then we have YGG2, which is our uh, our home for our inactives. Um, IGG is still nice. around, though they've been a lot less active lately. We've tried to work a little closer with them, but they haven't had as much progress hey. there. Yeah, they have not been as receptive to the assistance, but they're lost, I guess. They can do their own thing. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm still in one uh, YGG1, still grinding away. Um, I've played a little less you know uh regularly lately over the last few months but still grinding i think i'm level 25 at this point and yeah like a lot of the core members are still active everybody's here playing the game it's a fun game to be honest casual you don't have to put too much time unless you're you know really grinding these events and you know all of these uh the the cbc events as well here with the guild right that's when you guys are non-stop uh raiding and and you know doing your thing so it's cool. Yeah, CBC awesome. is very grindy. And for a frame of reference, we are the second most powerful alliance on C1 right now. Behind only the main alliance. Who are the ones that hold Congress. Hey, Palm wants to see them T6s. <laughs> oh, he does. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Let's see them. Well, maybe I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, we all know that's Fair a lot. <laughs> no, I, I definitely have some. <laughs> Amazing. That's the Marauder. That's the one for uh, PVE. Uh, I don't have the Valkyrie unlocked yet. Nice. What do you think of the update so far? So I think this, well, the higher costs are absurd. Like castle level 35 is just insane. It's like 11 billion yeah. resources. Um, the new T6 has some pretty impressive stats. Unfortunately, they're about four times the cost of T5. Right. I mean, they're they're incredibly painful to train, but it's like a 40% buff in stats. Yeah, that's a big boost. Um, plus they have those special buffs. So like a Paladin on defense, he gets a basically double his stats. There you go, Haven. There's some uh, hey. T6 Marauders. Sending the, moder the Marauders out. Let's go. They're a lot faster too. Uh, yes, they are. They're just all around better. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, there's a speed cap. Although the devs okay. keep saying there isn't one. There's got to be a speed cap. There can't be a non-speed cap. Yeah, because I, I have tried. Like, I sent T5 and T6 to something like 800 meters away, or 800 kilometers away, and the T6 still lost because they were sent second. Mm. So, Fair enough. if they were faster, then... They should have got there first. True. Just curious, like with the new troops, do you see any big changes happening, you know, with the way that 
resources are attained and how you guys navigate these events like when you're battling in, in the continent do you well, see any big changes with these new additions at, yeah at home things are quiet here on c1 we don't we don't fight and i don't think okay. anyone's going to risk their t6s on c1 during the kill event we haven't had a chance to have cvc with the new troops uh, that's currently happening in rookie now but that's mostly okay. lower level players on the newer continents so we haven't really gotten to see how that's going to play out and i think week four is still a couple of weeks away for when the real fighting actually starts there but we're going to be keeping an eye on on rookie league to see how they behave Um, you mentioned that um, there's a rookie league, right? Uh, so can you share us about like the mechanics or what? Because uh, we are currently live on all our social media platforms. So anyone who's watching this, this game is called League of Kingdoms. And maybe you can, uh, now you can invite uh, some new players as well on our stream. So um, maybe you can share uh, like the details on that event. So we can in actually entice people to um, join us if ever. All right. So all of the the servers in Loke, we, we refer to them as continents. And each continent has its own, own leadership, its own players, everything is separate. And every couple of months, we have an event called CDC, continent versus continent. There are, it's split into several leagues. There's major leagues, which we're in, we're in major league bracket two. Um, it's still outdated showing one because that's the bracket we were just last in. Um, but it's major league is split into three brackets. And then there's rookie league and then there's minor league rookie and minor play together. Each one, each league has eight, uh, sorry, each bracket in each league has eight continents playing together in a, a battle Royale, basically. And you can see which ones are where here. Um, right now, all these newer continents are the ones participating in their CBC. Um, and that's just a big fight. It takes about four weeks. It's a very long, very grindy event. But there's money to be had at the end. Not in minor league, but in our league and in rookie league, there is some uh, loca you can win based on your placement. So it's a big, it's a big fight. It's competitive, for sure. Very. Nice. Yeah, especially in our major leagues. Yeah, we actually dropped out of Major 1 because just how bad Major 1 had gotten. So we're dropping down to Bracket 2, hoping for a little better time there. Nice. Because there was just no way to compete with, like, C26, which has, like, five times the population. Fair enough. Got to continue to, you know, gather the troops grow the alliance right pretty much yeah cbc is interesting because it's not so much alliance based because we're all fighting as one continent so while we all go home to our little separate communities after cbc we all have to work together and we tend to get jumbled up quite a bit during cbc yeah people move in and out of different guilds it's a nice mix uh, and this CVC will be even more interesting with the new troops. It's been a long time. CVC has been pretty, let's say, cut and dry, um, where people know what they're doing, where they're going, and there isn't a lot of variation. This one should be a total different case. Nice. Yeah, and it's we have some old names. We have some old names that woke up too. As you can see, like Tuck here, he's already level 35, as with Brandon etch so yeah tut is tut is a big whale i think he was the first person one of the first people in loK to hit uh level 30 the old cat yeah yeah he, he's been around since the very beginning he's a big whale been quiet, been quiet for a while but he hit 35 fairly quickly i think he was the fourth or fifth person to hit level 35. Cool. Nice. yeah it's so many uh so much saved up from being 30 for so long so not surprised 
<laughs> well, that's all. That's the awesome. only way I was able to to squeak in as being one of the first to 33. But C1 actually did quite well in that event. Uh, I'm actually scrolling back to the. Where is it at? There it is. So, yeah, I was the fourth person to get to 33. We had uh, Enigma, who is down in goal one, who was the first one to unlock the marksman. And Tut was the fifth person to hit level 35. Nice. And that event The OGs ends. are still grinding. Oh, yeah. That event <laughs> ends here shortly, and we'll find out who made the most T6 troops. There's a, a drawing currently at the end of the event for anyone that had made over 10,000 T6. And they're going to be giving okay. away two level five lands. And whoever made the most gets a T6. I'm sure that's going to go to someone in Rookie League. Since they'll nice. be able to grind, they'll be able to grind away speed ups pretty easily there in Rookie with all the spark toy. But it's, it's usually pretty quiet and peaceful here on the, the home continent. We mostly just farm and grind away monsters and stuff like that. CBC is where the real excitement is. And you oh, gotta yeah, really pay attention because if you fall asleep in it and you're somewhere you're not supposed to be, you're going to get burnt. Um, um, Nap, we actually have one question here on Discord. So he was actually asking um, when you guys started playing LOK and how different is it from now, uh, from now, from before? So, like the differences, because um, you mentioned that you guys are one of the first few people who actually played this one, right? And there has been a lot of change logs already since then. So, how big of a difference is um, LK from the start and uh, from what we have right now? It's improved significantly. They've been slowly adding more content. I mean, I think we waited like a year for the Drago launch. Um, but that's nice that we're actually able to involve our dragos in combat now. We can send them out to mine with. Uh, let me pull one in here. Um, but you can include them with your troops when you're out doing things. Um, obviously, you can send to these little drago mines. That's a new that's new content. We have the T6s. They've added new skins. This skin here was from the anniversary event, which just happened uh, about a week ago. Um, that's from last year's that one there um anniversary cakes so that, <laughs> yep they give you a little buff to uh your rewards from monsters so they were definitely worth the grind um but so they added this a, a couple of months ago we can actually use our dragos send them out to fight it won't make oh, much difference the main, uh, what's the main advantage of using a dragon Right now, combat buffs, um, as far as like actually in game, the biggest thing is money. You can get your DSA from these little mines here. That takes a while to do, but you can, uh, yeah, here we go. You get this, this is Drago Soul Amber. You can convert that to Drago Soul Token, which you can then use to either stake, which I don't have anything pledged right now. And there's also a, a shop that you can spend it in, though everything's a little overpriced. Um, but you can also convert it to DST and sell it. It's also used for breeding dragos, which is what the guild does with most of its. Um, right now we have a uh, 120 or so, I think, between. Uh, between the two wallets yeah i was trying to pull up my spreadsheet to see how much we have here uh 134. we have 63 genesis and 71 in uh of the non-genesis 67 of which are purebreds nice yeah so we that's have been a, going hard <laughs> yeah the breeding program has been quite aggressive Yeah, it uh, looks yep, like you've Haven got an just... army of dragos. Oh, yeah. And it's constantly expanding. Um, nice. I'm fortunately the 
or I'm fortunate the Dow accepted the suggestion to purchase purebreds off the market instead of trying to generate purebreds ourselves. It was significantly easier and probably saved us a small fortune. Yeah, that's probably something we can kind of dive into and chat a little bit about here is like just beyond the actual game itself, right? YGG has its own um, sub DAO that that's governed internally by token holders uh, that makes all these decisions. It's not actually uh, like the core team from YGG, although the core team does have have stake and they can veto, you know, any bad proposal. But so far, uh, the core side has, has stayed out of any votes and we've done it all uh, all internally with token holders. Yeah, actually, hold on one second. I can, yeah, hey, here we go. Great. So we do all this voting through this. This is a snapshot. And you can see all our past votes, our decisions we've made. Um, so yeah, here's where we voted on the uh, land development program, how we were going to set up our pools. Here was the one I was talking about with purchasing Gregos, and you can see the votes. It's everything's out front, transparent, out in the open. And then these votes happen, and then the DAO does what we had all agreed to do. And any token holder can start a vote, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be myself or not. If somebody has an idea and they have tokens, they're they're allowed to create a proposal. Uh, in Discord, yes. Not on Snapshot yes. directly. Nope. So how that works is you get your token holder role by using the collab land bot, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. It's used in quite a few servers, but if you have just even a single YGG loc token in your wallet, it'll grant you the role and access to the channel. And then you can start discussion. And if you have people that are in agreement with you, we'll set up a bug. We can flesh out the details in discord and then set up the vote and see what the rest of the guild wants to do. Once it's up on uh, snapshot, then it'll be a vote by token holders. One token, one vote. Um, so just out of curiosity, um, what do you guys usually vote for? Like, um, what do you guys usually discuss in this um, Sabdao? And um, like, uh, is it more on strategy, gameplay, or something that the, uh, the guild is going, um, which direction the guild is going to, or something like that? Yeah, so generally with the like snapshot votes, that's going to be something like a financial decision, something managing the DAO's assets, where there's Drago, where there's land program, or, uh, well, for example, our stake, we staked like 25,000 loco. It's going to be stuff like that. As far as like in-game direction, stuff like that, we generally don't hold votes for that. We've uh, also had votes for, for buying more land and stuff like that, expanding it. Like YGG is the largest land holder um, within LOK. Um, and there hasn't been a land sale for a while, but when the next one does come up, we'll probably have another vote again on whether or not we want to buy and where we want to buy them. Nice. Um, what are the perks of having more lands? Like um, on the other games, if you secure more lands, you have more resources, right? So uh, on a LOK, what's the difference of getting more lands? Well, unfortunately, we haven't been able to claim our resources because of a, an issue with Gnosis. So you can see this one right here has uh, like 700 million unclaimed resources. But we do get tokens. We get loca. And it's uh, 70 or 80 loca per day we get from our lands. It's not a ton. But it's a steady income, and we don't have to do anything for it. Uh, we have the land dev program, which, uh, as you can see here, there's dev points on these lands. The land dev program rewards our members for providing those dev points, and the higher our dev points, the more uh, more local we are. Uh, this one actually is getting ready to promote to level six here soon. We're getting close on it. Um, but yes, we also get 5% of any resources that are mined on the plot. But like I said, we've been unable to claim those resources. So there's a rather sizable amount built up. 
one day one day we'll be able to access them and and we will boost players to the moon right we have a huge amount you could technically mint and sell the resources but you know, the market for that is actually not not too big oh, it's, a, it's actually going up because of the the new updates yeah yeah land or not land sorry um resources have like tripled in price I know this because yeah, as I was going to level 34, I was trying to buy them. And I watched everything nice. like triple. It was horrible. Um, you guys are actually mentioning uh, a lot of things regarding levels, how to boost people um to level up. So, uh, what is like um the advantage of having a higher level? Like, uh, me, I, 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 I really, uh, I don't pretty much play LK, but I have a general uh, knowledge on it. So, um, if I have more levels, what are like the advantages over, um, over against those who have lower levels? Like, do they get better troops? Do they have stronger stats or what? Okay, so yeah, the troops are there are six tiers of troops. Um, well, almost kind of seven, but they're unlocked at different levels. Uh, T five. This was the old cap. These were the these used to be the max. These were unlocked at level thirty. They have a significant advantage over the T four, which was unlocked at twenty three. And every time you level up your castle, you can also level up your academy, and you gain access to these researches. These are permanent buffs. That you will always have once you've completed them um and the further you progress in level the more of these you unlock as you can see down here there's a, a whole new set that require academy 33 to start and it starts at like one percent but these go up to 40 percent and which is a, an enormous buff to just have constantly applied and an enormous advantage over anyone you're you're fighting with and there's a whole bunch of these. There's tons and tons of research you can complete. All of this is level locked. All these little advantages, the higher your castle level, the higher your academy level, the more that you can unlock. It's slow and a little bit of a grind, but once you get there, it's a huge advantage. So, um, meaning to say, even if I like start right now, is there a way for me to catch up with um, people who started way, way back? Or um, is there anything that I can do so I can uh, catch up with these people? Like um, buy an NFT or get a different account or something? Like if I want to jump in right now on the game and me as a really competitive player, I want to be on the top. What's the best tip or what's, uh, what's like... Um, What's the best idea to, uh, to push for uh, to push for it? All right. Let's so say NFTs would would boost you, would they not? No, they're they have utility, but it's uh it's not going to be like a pay to win deal. So the the big thing here is, is you do actually have to put in the time. That's uh that's one of the nice things about Luke. And while there are ways to sidestep that by buying stuff. It's not a viable strategy unless you just have a mountain of cash to burn, like uh, <laughs> let's say gold. <laughs> yeah, you got to be a whale to to speed up your progression. It takes time, honestly. Like I'm only level 25. That took you know somewhere near a year and a half or so. And obviously, I'm playing casually. If if you're grinding every day, it's a bit faster. But you definitely have to put the time in to to progress. Yeah, and that's that's not to say help with that. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's not to say again if you're a lower level, right? There's not really too much competition or a reason to be like, "Hey, I need to be 35 ASAP." Um you can still participate in, and be active within the normal area because it's not like you're fighting other people. And then when CVC comes around, even as a low level player, you can still contribute. Um Yeah, once you yeah, once to, you get T5, yeah, you can still con you can still compete in the fight because you are not leading. And I don't mean that derogatorily or anything like that, but the, the point being is, is that in rallies and gate defense and all the major CVC stuff, the gate or rally leader stats are the only ones that matter. Your stats aren't counted in the calculations. So you can send and contribute regardless as long as you have the correct troop types 
for example, so basically, it's, it's a number game, right? Because <laughs> uh, the Pretty only much. one that needs to be on like on the top tier is what you uh, guys mentioned is like the raid leader, and everyone else can contribute depending on the strategy that you guys are employing on the each war or something. So it's really much interesting. Um, because <laughs> uh, I'm trying to ask questions uh, for like beginners or anyone who wants to jump into the game, because uh, they might get intimidated that they might uh, be are really left behind already on in terms of progress but yeah uh, guys you heard it here <laughs> you guys can still contribute on the game even if you started late as long as you get, uh, you, you are part of a good community which is probably why gg so yeah let's go you'll get there eventually right and it's great when you have support like with all these you know fellow guild members here able to help us uh you know grind and level up a bit faster right it's definitely better with with the support for sure yeah, well, yeah and that's the nice thing about um sorry nat it's one of the nice things about lok right is we're not there's some games where it's like you have to go hard you have to play like non-casually and stuff this game you can go as hard as you want or play as casually as you want it's not like we're gonna boot you from the guild if you only log in you know even let's say once a week we we have like our alternate guild for that reason right um or for a lot of people they log in once a day they do their dailies they head out and they they're happy to slowly level up and then they join when cvc happens right there's lots of options um to to choose on on what your play style is and you know you can go as fast or slow as you want and contribute as much as you want or just chill out and, and hang out right yeah yeah, there, there's no pressure. I've experienced that um, firsthand. Yeah, CBC is the only sure. only time where it gets really crazy. But you know, if you don't want to participate in CBC, then just hang out on the mainland. Um, there are some consequences for mining rights, but that's a whole different story. There are ways to deal with that. Yeah. Um, Got to make sure you're in the right zone. Don't want to, you know, ruffle any feathers there. <laughs> C1, well, like most continents, it's while we are self governing, there are, well, with self government comes rules. And most of them are around DSA and crystals. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's nice and quiet on C1. You can grind away, and then when CVC comes, we all stand together, and you can just endlessly rally Sparkboy over and over. And that's a huge, huge bonus for growth because you get an absolutely enormous amount of crystals. Nice. Which makes it far easier to level up quickly. Not to mention all the troop speed ups. Uh, we also do like dragon rallies in the hive from time to time. Those provide speed ups and resources. And the guild also has a. Uh, a small little donation wallet that we've been using for resources to help people get to C30 and unlock T5, which are which used to be the top level troops in Castle. It's not anymore because obviously it's been raised, but that was a way to get people into the fight. I think right nice. now there's about four, four billion in there, something like that. Um, to actually receive from that, you do need to be ready to start the upgrade you're requesting help with. But that form is available in our Discord for our members who uh, who are ready for that. I know a few of you have already applied and received a distribution from that. And we're glad to help as many people we can get to, to level 30. I know Brotato uh, right here, he's been very helpful with that allowing people to clean out one of his alts repeatedly. GG's, Brotato, let's go. I might have to check that out. <laughs> There's never been awesome. a better time. Sounds awesome, guys. Great things happening here in YGG, LOK. Love to see it. Yeah, we try to give everyone as best we can a, a help up. Because we know it can be a little, little rough getting started every little bit helps definitely it's honestly one of the best times to join right now like there is 
quite a lot to do there's a whole nother tier of stuff to go for now like me and nap were talking about it for a while there we were like okay we we're waiting for dragos and stuff which is great but there wasn't like another goal to go to you know you hit 30 you had all your t5s you're like okay i have everything now what do i go for besides cvc right um this is another big update and, and a lot of these things are going to take a long time to get to unless obviously you you just go ham and spend real money or all those speed ups that you've been saving right to to get to 35 for an average person and then get all of your t6 unlock it's probably going to take a year oh, if you're already if you're already level 30. <laughs> fallen <Beautiful grind. laughs> But that's reasonable anyways with an MMO like this, you know, where where you've got to consistently grind and, you know, build up your kingdom, grow your your resource pool, all that fun stuff. So it sounds fair, you know, like Clash of Clans would be my OG comparison here and and it's a grind, right? And uh, having a guild only helps. So make sure you jump into the YGG Discord and if you like LOK, you like what you see, hop in, jump into the mix. The more the merrier, right? Yep. Exactly. We're happy to have the. Uh, we're happy to accept newbies. We'll help you get get set up and get going. Oh yeah. It's good stuff. I'm actually quite I'm curious because uh, you guys have been from. mentioning uh, CVC for um, <laughs> quite a while, but I haven't really seen it in action. Like, do you guys have any videos, like highlights, on um, how CVC happens? What does it look like? How how long does it take? Um, well, what's the schedule for, for this one? So, yeah, just a general overview of the entire CVC. So CVC is a four week long event. Uh, first two or first three weeks are generally just kind of peaceful farming. We're able to grind monsters, uh, and just gather resources and basically prepare for a big fight. Sometimes our neighbors aren't particularly peaceful and we actually have a, a fight early on but most of the time the fighting only happens during week four at which point it's basically 24 7. nice yeah i've participated in one cvc and i think it was the first one and it was intense honestly just seeing the you know the expansion and everybody just raiding grinding for resources because there was so much to to participate in right be able to collect and yeah just take advantage of and get some experience level up right push forward so it was exciting but it, it definitely is intense it's competitive you can get burned if you're not careful right <laughs> yeah that's the big thing with cbc is you have to pay attention to where you're at because yeah. if you're out past a gate somewhere you're not supposed to be somewhere the enemy has access to you they could kill your troops take your loot yeah. So uh, given that uh, this event is really competitive or what, so what do you get um, after it? So like, what are the rewards of um, on performing good on the, this kinds of event? So in CVC, the big reward is Loka, which is the governance token for League of Kingdoms. You'll receive it as vouchers, which you can then convert to the actual token. They have added the ability to, uh, yes, fawn, AKA money. <laughs> well, you can convert it either to the, uh, you can either convert it to loca on ETH, or they also added now you can convert it to wrapped loca, which was a nice little, uh, bonus. Uh, oh, and as I'm talking about the, uh, that donation wallet, I just got a message on discord that someone sent a whole bunch to the. <laughs> Um, but yes, the, the big reward is Loka and to do so the continent needs to place in the top four. Um, we kind of set this last one out so we can drop into a lower bracket, but our plan is to win. And if we do the whole continent should receive, what is it? 90, either 60 or 90,000 Loka split between the players based on rank. It's actually, it's a rather sizable amount. I'm trying to look and see if I had any. Um, 
videos from CDC? Um, well, NAP is actually looking uh, looking for the video. We actually have a trailer ready for uh, Luca for a uh, new player who doesn't know uh, what law is all about. So, Seth will take it away. arena so that's loca let's go <laughs> yeah i haven't seen this trailer as well what i was able to watch was drago and maybe yeah. uh well nap is yeah. looking for uh, the, some of the videos in cvc maybe we can play uh the drago trailer as well i know it's been uh, up already for a year or something <laughs> but let's it's go hype, though. it's hype though yeah yeah <laughs> Gotta love the cinematics. Genesis Drago. <laughs> I think that was Fire. a different trailer from what I've watched with me. <laughs> it's good stuff. So the building he landed on in that is actually the uh, ancient temple in CVC. Nice. And I didn't find what I was looking for here. So this was a this was a gate fight in CVC. As you can see, all of these castles piled up around the gate. Everyone's fighting for it. We were fighting with uh, Continent Twenty Four here, so they they currently held the gate, and you can see our troops here along the bottom attacking it and be nervously checking my treasures and buffs to make sure everything's where it should be right and there we go all their all the enemy troops piled out because we won the fight <laughs> love it look at all these castles yeah it's a it's a huge fight and you you can see all the the troops inside uh since i'm a title holder i can adjust leader setup kick troops and stuff like that but yeah Lupin said you can see his castle burning there <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Can> we? No. <laughs> go back, go back, go back. like i said if you're not careful you might get burned right <laughs> gg where'd he at oh yeah we can't right here <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah, that's that's why everyone has a shield. It's uh, it's well, like I said, it's a risky place to be, but I mean, as you can see, it's it's a very aggressive fight. There's tons and tons of people. Like the whole screen here is covered. Yep. And they do they a ton of rallies and stuff like For CVC. Example, see, there are. During the rally events, I just remember my phone notifications nonstop all day long. Like, I just pull up my notifications. There's a whole list of LOK. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, we can see here, this was the, the enemy setting up to try to retake the gate. So, it notifies us that they started a rally. And you can see they've got four rallies queued. Let's go. And it also shows, yeah, it's it's a huge fight. 
it's a very busy time. Yeah, I agree to that for sure. But it is it's some of the most exciting time in in the game. Definitely. And, and the Discord is always crazy active as well. Yeah, we try to keep it active. Yeah. And the big thing there too is if you have any questions, need help with anything, leadership is always around and happy to answer any questions you have. I really like those trailers. Honestly, it's it's almost like a throwback to Clash of Clans. I remember when they started introducing characters and you know, if, if LOK added like just a you know, like a coin phrase, you know, like hot riders, like something for their characters, do something <laughs> unique, it would be cool. <laughs> like the dragos and so on. But it's I love the cinematics. It's always a great thing to to help you connect with the, the in game characters, right? So good stuff. They supposedly have a new head of marketing, so we're we're hoping to see some new stuff like that here eventually. Yeah, we had a great chat with them like earlier in the week, and they spilled quite a bit of leaks. So you know, for those of you who weren't there, check out that video. There's there's a lot of new content coming up for LOK. So uh, I think before we wrap things up, uh, no sales, maybe you guys can share uh, like what are the uh, the features that you guys are looking forward to, like. You three are uh, avid um, LOK players, so what got the most attention uh, in terms of uh, updates or what? Yeah, for the updates, honestly, I got excited when they mentioned that they have a new game that they're working on. That's going to be sort of, you know, a broader ecosystem of LOK and they would work in tandem and it would be a totally new game. So I'm interested to see when they finally drop that, what it's like, how it works with the LOK ecosystem and, and how this game evolves. Um, the new troops, exciting stuff. I've got some work I need to do. I got to connect with the, the LOK uh, <laughs> initiatives here and get to level 30, make my way and, and see what uh, the, the T6 is all about, right? So there's a lot of new content and it's just a matter of grinding and seeing what's next. That's my take. What about you, Fallen? Nap? What are you guys saying? I'm looking forward to the next CVC because I want to see how all this plays out. And I have to admit, I've trained all these T6. I kind of want to use them. I'm certainly not Let's going go. to waste them here on C1. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you are, Itching. You want to go crush some people that only have T5s, don't you? Bully. Well, I, I would crush them with <laughs> T5. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I have some I saved here from... Yeah, here we go. I saved from last CVC. I mean, it's... Oh, man. It's brutal. Yeah, the, yeah, that's not even... That's not a fight. That was a slaughter. <laughs> Just a moment of silence. <laughs> rest, Rest in peace. <laughs> People are gonna be burning. RIP. <laughs> yeah, this one was funny detected. because uh, this guy had attacked uh, Fat Tabby, hmm. and Tabby moved, and I took his spot and he hit me instead. Yeah, there's ways to to juke people around. It's it's funny. Yeah, that, that that one is a hilarious trick to do because they think. That they're going to attack someone weak and small and then their rally launches and starts heading there and then their target disappears and then someone really <laughs> big drops it back in the spot and they hit them instead oh man that's and funny you get all that's these a good strategy enormous... oh yeah it works great and oh, yeah. uh that's the <laughs> bait and switch c2. we have to thank c2 for learning that because they're the ones that first pulled it on us that's a classic uh, bait and switch love it <laughs> but I mean, even even someone really big like this guy, he was, he was the top in his continent. The defender has every advantage, so there's a huge benefit to actually using that strategy because you get this enormous amount of mortality reduction. You get these enormous buffs to your attack and defense from your wall. Plus, you can have more troops because rallies are capped, but. You know, you have your 3.75 million troop cap in your castle, but you can take in another like 2 million troops in support. So you can end up having, in this case, over 5 million troops on defense. 
so it wasn't even That's close a to a win game. for him. Yeah, it's enormous. And look how many <laughs> more he lost. Oh my god! Oh yeah, that's brutal. That's all because that's he attacked. <laughs> all because he attacked one of our members, and I took their place. It's, it's <laughs> you gotta a remember strategy. And like for a pe for people watching, like so those troops take a heck of a long time to train. <laughs> yeah. And so a lot like, of resources as well. Like it takes exactly. time. So like like how long? <laughs> how long for like the level six ones? <laughs> well, we haven't got into level six yet, but Nap, how how long does it take you to, to train T sixes? Well you can see there right there, go. I've got five uh, five thousand currently training and it takes almost five days. What <laughs> yeah. a week of training <laughs> and what are the resources required to, to train on five K? She's and I will... <laughs> Bummer, the, and train, I... the global training's not up right now. <laughs> I know it's a lot. Like I'm like it. already ranting uh, on COC for like five minutes or thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the excitement's um, there. So we do have yeah speed ups. You can get these from like monsters and stuff like that. So it's not like you have to to actually wait that long. You can accelerate this a little bit. And once it's done there, I'm going to put my training treasures on. It's a lot of nice treasures there. Um, but you can see here's T5. So if I wanted to make, let's say, 50,000 of them, it'd take me 12 days and 20 hours and 14 million lumber. But if I wanted to trade that much T6, it takes four times as long. 51 days. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you got to remember, he has all the right treasures. He he he's missing a few other things like there like he said there's a global training buff and a few other things and obviously your clanmates can help you as well, right? Matt? Well, uh can't help with training. They can help with building uh, upgrades okay. and research, but they can't help with training. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's why you use speed up type <laughs> How, how much is like uh like that in <laughs> The twenty four thousand like gold or something or that uh ruby or something. The the uh, the gems. Oh yeah. the crystals, yeah. So the best way to get crystals is to mine them. Uh like that. Or you can also get them from monsters. Uh it's not a guaranteed drop though, as you can see. I've got several reports here. Uh let me just go find a monster. They're uh, not an abundant resource. Yeah. Let's just say that. It's, yeah, it's it's harder to get. Yeah. You can grind monsters, but that cost AP and it's only a chance to drop it, but you have a chance to get some. It's ten per per level. So like this guy can drop thirty. Um yeah. you can also buy them. That's not the best way to get them. Uh, <laughs> but we can show that. This oh, there you go. There's For 50 tons of... USD you can train level six troops in one click <laughs> <laughs> pretty much that's but the that, cost that's, that's the price yeah. you pay that is, <laughs> that's, that's the strategy easy. some players <laughs> use yes uh, but the ones that do that are uh they can be a little smarter with that there's more efficient ways to get speed ups by buying them there's a the premium speed up pack three which you can get as a an nft sometimes there's a, an NFT collection for packages. For example, what? One second. Let's fix it. There we go. You can get packages as NFTs and it'll have stuff in it. And you can just buy these off the market. I got that one from Rumble, uh, which was a, a little game in their Discord. Uh, yeah, there's various ways. But, but yeah, there, there's different ways to get the packages. Um, sometimes the NFT ones are a little cheaper. And the uh, the moderators over in their Discord get compensated with the premium speed up pack three, which is a very uh, desirable one. It's got like 165 days for the speed up setup. Nice. And that one's a, that one's a favorite of people that like to spend. 
That's for sure. Right. Speed ups are, are super valuable. Like I'm actually almost out. I just yeah. grinded to to Castle Thirty Two there, and I'm almost out of my speed ups already. I thought I had way more. Oh, well, don't feel bad. I'm nice. completely out of building speed ups. You can get them I, in the VIP I... shop. You know, use some crystals. Yep. <laughs> Well, that's oh, the other yeah. reason I want CVC to come back, because CVC you get a huge amount of, of speed ups if you play, right? Like that's you can get nice. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I haven't bought much out of the VIP shop this week. I've been kind of slacking, but you can get a whole bunch of stuff at a discount in here. Uh, it's limited, of course, so like you can get like one of the thirty day at half off. But there's a whole bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you got to keep here. your eye out for, for the good stuff. Well, that one's a, a fixed set. Oh. <laughs> They're not all maxed. <laughs> still got to do maxed my gathering. GG's. Oh, yeah, they oh, added the, the mythic, mythic treasures as well. Yeah. I they already oh, have. Oh, my God. These are, these, are, these are horrible. Woo. <laughs> Look at that. This is all I've managed to get. 18 pieces for this one and 18 pieces for that one and it it's not 10 per level anymore it's multiples of 15 now Oof. yeah it's horribly grindy i've opened like hundreds of platinum chests and that's all i've gotten i haven't even managed to unlock these ones well they gotta give you that's something intense. to go for <laughs> <laughs> yeah something to motivate you for playing every day like grind all the way <laughs> Yeah, my only hope is at CBC. I'm going to be able to create a mountain of crystals just so I can buy a mountain of platinum chest. <laughs> Let's the go. good news is, is the platinum chest usually have a decent amount of legendaries in them, although that seems to have been nerfed. But you used to be able to get a, a rather good amount of legendary stuff out of them. It was really good for for building building those. Yes, Haven, you need an enormous amount of crystals for them. That's why I'm looking forward to CBC. Nice. Plus, it's great for our land dev. Everyone coming home and spending their crystals on our land. Yeah, you usually see a nice influx of, of money to go. Right? The land dev, what, what did we send out last time for the land dev? What was it? Like 300 USD split among how many people? Yeah, give me a second. I'll go back and look. Uh, 269 was the last one. And that was like 90 some odd transactions. Yeah. And prior to and that, during C during CBC, we were over 300, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember, guys, that's not evenly split, right? That's if you if you contribute more, you get more. Yes, that is based on contribution. So we have adjusted the payout. It is now 0 0.8 USDC per thousand dev points. Um, but still, you know, we're adding a ton of death points to our land. This is a huge benefit and just going to say this here, that is well above market price for the land debt program. There are a lot of our competitors are in the four and five cent range. We're at eight. So we do pay nice. quite well on that. And you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to spend anything to get involved in that. All you have to do is you sign up. And then you spend crystals on our land. Your contributions are tracked automatically by the system. And then every two weeks, we send out the payment. No wallet connections or, or uh, transactions, no gas fees, nothing of that is on you. Everything is just sent directly to you. And, and you should be pretty much already on our land, like you get benefits <laughs> in game for being in the ygg alliance area so all of those are in our lands <laughs> anyways yeah, so all, it's like yeah all of the all of the major buildings for ygg zero and ygg one are on guild owned land so all of this area here yeah um, and the great thing is even if you play casually you still get benefits from being part of the guild right you get a little yep. boost from all these different events and yeah, all these different things going on. I know every time I log in, I've got rewards to collect. Even if I've only played like once or twice for the week, YGG is grinding. So it's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. 
right. I've got a bunch of Drago eggs. We're gonna have to do another Drago egg rally rally session eventually. Oh, yeah. here we go. Same. I've there. got lots of eggs as well. Nope. Yep. There's so the map. Yep. So this gives you an idea just how much land we have. I mean, it, it's a it's a little outdated because that still says SBW up there. That's now YGG too. <laughs> but uh, all this all of this land here in this inside this yellow border is ours. So we have a, a rather large section that you can develop and get compensated for. This section is 286 parcels. Makes up a rather large portion of the map. It's massive. Yes, as Fallen said, we are one of, if not the largest, landholders in the entire game. It just shows you how many castles are in the small section that we have like populated right now and, and how big that region is. How many players can actually settle here it's actually huge it's massive oh yeah and this little blue cluster here there's about 100 and then over here yeah. we can't see it because we're not in ygg1 but if we were we'd see the same over here with them and then we nice. still have space down below all of this is ours as well as you can see we have uh these little outposts so other alliances so this is this isn't one of ours, but we are allowing their members to participate in our public pool and we let them set up an outpost down here so they could teleport down here easily to spend on our land. So we have nice. others that are, we allow anyone into the land program. We do give That's a 33% right. bonus to guild members for one account. So you can earn a little bit more with one of your accounts if you're an Alliance member. But this is just the, this is another example of a partnership we've done. We let their members come down here and participate in the program. They get compensated, and in return, we get our land a little better developed. It's a win-win. Let's go. Oh yeah. And we have people doing this on every continent. Well, not quite every continent, but a whole bunch of other ones. Soon enough, right? Soon enough. Yes. <laughs> YGG is only on C1, but we have land dev participants all across the game. Nice. And that's probably a good point to wrap up on here before we close out and take some final questions is like, if you're just starting out, one of the key things we cannot stress enough is before you hit level 10, which actually happens very, very fast, you need to move to continent one if you want to play with us. Um, they give you all all the tools to do that. We have a guide in our actual YGG LOK Discord. But if you hit level 10, it becomes like astronomically more difficult to switch continents. Not to say it doesn't it doesn't happen, it's just way more of a hassle. Yes. So when you first start, it gives you in your inventory a little item called an intercontinental teleport. And that will let you jump to any continent you want for free. But you can't use it after level 10. It's removed from your inventory. You can still migrate after level 10. You can migrate at any level, but it costs, what is it? Uh, 1000 crystal per 5 million power, I think. So it gets, it gets really expensive really fast if you start leveling up past level 10. But if you don't, you can jump to continent one for free using that little teleport in your backpack. And then once you're here, you can join an alliance and level up as much as you want. Nice. Nice, nice. So I think uh, that's a pretty much a uh, good way to wrap things up. Again, um, if you guys are planning to join the YGG Alliance, um, please make sure to um, go to the C1 um, continent so you guys can actually play with the entire YGG family. So yeah thank you so much everyone and we see us fallen and definitely nap uh, on all the insights and everything that we have done throughout the entire week regarding league of kingdoms and it has been a really um, successful week i have to say that one and yeah i think uh i think uh <laughs> we're uh we're done and um let's go let's go <laughs> yeah, yeah thanks, guys. thanks together we play together we play let's go